Two Russian aerospace Tupolev Tu-22M3 supersonic long-range strategic and maritime strike bombers. NATO reporting name backfire are taxing to a runway somewhere in Russia. Escorting them today are Sukhoi Su-35 multi-role air superiority fighters. NATO reporting name Flanker E. Tu-22M3 bomber is a product of the Cold War arms race driven by the Soviet's requirements to create the first supersonic bomber for the Air Force of the Soviet Union, enabling it to be able to bomb targets as far away as the USA. Its story starts in the 1950s. The Soviet Union's main bombers were the 114 foot long Tupolev Tu-16, a twin jet engined strategic heavy bomber, NATO reporting name Badger, with a range of 7,200 kilometres or 4,500 miles and a maximum speed of 1,050 kilometres an hour. It was introduced in the Soviet Air Force in 1954. The bomber could carry a range of missiles and dependent on variant could hold 9,000 kg or 20,000 pound of bombs. The Soviet Air Force also operated the 155 foot long Maya Sischev M4 3M Molot, NATO reporting name Bison. Introduced around 1956, its original design role to target the USA fell well short of its required range, achieving 5,600 kilometres or 3,500 miles. Famously or infamously, depending on which side you are on, it was this aircraft, the early variant model Myatishchev M4 Bison in July 1955. At the Soviet Day demonstrations at the Toshino airfield, Onlookers witnessed Soviet air crews operating 10 Bison bombers. Filling the skies above with its impressive 165 foot wingspan, the aircraft flew past the reviewing stand, flew out of sight, quickly turned around, and then flew past the stands again with 8 more bombers. That presented the illusion that there were 28 aircraft in the flyby. Western analysts extrapolating from the illusionary 28 aircraft that by 1960 the Soviet Air Force would have 800 of these giant aircraft. It is this one event alone that created the term Bomber Gap, with the US responding by building hundreds of Boeing B-47s and B-52s to counter this perceived threat. However, a little more than 100 of these four jet-engined aircraft were built, resulting in several updates. Most were converted in the 1970s and 80s to tanker aircraft. The last of the 1950s main Soviet bombers, seen here is the Tupolev Tu-95, NATO reporting name Bear, a large four-engine turboprop powered strategic bomber and missile platform. First flown in 1952, the Tu-95 entered service with a long-range aviation of the Soviet Air Forces in 1956, with a range of 15,000 kilometres or 9,500 miles, which is far enough to threaten key targets in the United States. The Soviet Union in the 1950s was aware of supersonic aircraft projects in the United States. But even the Soviets must have been surprised when on the 11th of November 1956, the United States Air Force conducted the first flight of the world's first supersonic bomber, the Convair B-58 Hustler. 
The aircraft has an impressive speed of Mark II, 1390 miles per hour. The aircraft was incredibly sophisticated for the era, which in part was why it took another five years before the aircraft was introduced into the United States Air Force. Probably unknown to the Soviets at the time, the B-58 had only a moderate range, achieving around 3,220 kilometres or 2,000 miles when carrying a standard load of five nuclear weapons, approximately a 5,000 kg load. It also required multiple air-to-air -air refuelling during most of its flights, supplied from the ever-reliable KC-135 air-to-air refuelling tanker fleet. The aircraft was difficult to fly, incredibly expensive to produce, in today's money around $180 million each. Its complexity required very specialised equipment and highly trained maintenance teams. Each B-58 cost three times as much to operate than the B-52. As a result of high running costs and overall performance factors, only 116 aircraft were built. 26 of these were lost in accidents, and only after 10 years in service, it was retired in 1970. So this brings us to the Tupelo Tu-22, NATO reporting name Blinder, the first supersonic bomber to enter production in the Soviet Union. During this time in the early 1960s, both the Soviet Air Force jet engine strategic bombers Bison or Badger had not met the operational range requirements to conduct long distance flights, leaving only the Tu-95 turboprop powered aircraft with a cruise speed of 710 km an hour really able to carry out attacks against the US. Its chance of achieving strategic military strikes against US targets would likely to be very low. However, Soviet and American strategists had calculated bomber aircraft losses to be very high, but in this dark era of possible nuclear conflict, only a few aircraft needed to reach its target. The Soviets hoped of increasing its bomber strike range with a realistic capability to attack US targets now rested with a Tu-22, with the first prototype, 105, flying in 1958, just two years after the B-58 made its appearance, but the 105 produced a disappointing speed and range. The aircraft underwent a number of significant changes and named 105A. It first flew 7th September 1959, but under constant pressure from the Soviet military to produce a supersonic jet, the manufacturer Tupolev produced 20 versions of the 105A, even though testing of the 105A was incomplete. The first serial production aircraft named Tu-22B flew 22nd of September 1960. The Soviets were once again keen to show the world the supersonic bomber race was very much alive and the Tu-22B was presented to the public in the Toshino Aviation Day Parade on 9th of July 1961 with a fly past of 10 aircraft. The Tu-22B entered service in 1962 and a very short time began developing faults, resulting in the grounding of some aircraft and widespread unservability issues. Several crashes were recorded with an unspecified loss of aircrew. The aircraft, it turned out, was awkward to fly, especially during landings. The pilot visibility was blocked due to a very high panel blocking the view on the right side of the cockpit. Also, controls were out of the reach of the strapped in pilots. The Tu-22's handling characteristics proved to be very dangerous. Its landing speed was 100 km an hour or 60 miles per hour, greater than previous bombers. It had a tendency to pitch up and strike its tail upon landing. The aircraft was both disappointing and an embarrassment, and worse, was still lacking both the speed and range that had been expected. It was produced in relatively small numbers, around 300 especially compared to the Tupelo Tu-16 that it was designed to replace, it became increasingly clear that the aircraft was inadequate in its role as a bomber. The aircraft was later adapted for other roles, notably as the Tu-22 Arikonsa aircraft and as carriers for the long-range Kh-22 anti-ship missile. Tupolev, whose expertise is with bombers, offered the Soviet Air Force an updated version of the Tu-22 it would be a completely new, almost a start from scratch development, but incorporating some of the Tu-22 equipment that proved reliable, enabling Tupolev to bring down the costs. The Soviet government was at first unsure about the need to approve the development of replacement aircraft so soon after the Tu-22 had just entered service. Some leading Soviet military commanders, and even the Soviet leader, Nikita Khrushchev, in 1964, 
felt the way forward was to develop greater offensive and defensive missile systems, scrapping or relegating expensive bomber forces to minor offensive roles. So confusingly, which was the intention, the Soviet Air Force and Tuplov in order to save face regarding the Tu-22's operational deficiencies and to stave off criticism from the ICBM lobby, agreed to pass off the design as an update of the Tu-22 in their discussions with the government. The new top secret aircraft was designated Tu-22M, its first flight was August 1969, and this time it was US intelligence who were more than surprised by a satellite image of this supersonic aircraft. After all, Nikita Khrushchev was adamant that ICBMs would render the bomber obsolete. Tupolev stopped production of the Tu-22 in 1969 after it was confident the Tu-22M would be a considerable improvement on its previous flawed aircraft. The Tu-22M NATO reporting name Backfire is a supersonic, variable sweep wing long-range strategic and maritime strike bomber. Its first production model was named Tu-22M2 and introduced into the Soviet Air Force in 1972. The aircraft did have issues. It suffered from widespread maintenance problems during its service with the Soviet forces. Poor manufacturing quality, probably as a result of pressures, produced the aircraft quickly. Combined with government bureaucracy, which hampered the provision of spare parts to allow the servicing of the aircraft resulting in some aircraft running for up to six months. The aircraft was a vast improvement of the Tu-22. In 1977, the Soviets began test flying an updated Backfire, the Tu-22M3, Backfire C. Introduced into Soviet operations in 1983, the aircraft is capable of 1,241 miles per hour, and dependent on bomb load can achieve an operational range of 6,800 kilometers. The aircraft is primarily designed as a missile carrier. In 2015, Russian military intervention in the Syrian civil war involved Russian aerospace forces deploying 12 Tu-22M3 bombers flying from Russia to hit targets in Syria. The Tu-22M3 has maintained a presence ever since. The Backfire main weapon is a 500 kg KH-32 anti-ship missile with a range of 1,000 kilometers. It can be armed with conventional or nuclear warhead. However, recent operations in Syria have recorded the backfire using conventional freefall bombs. The backfire can mount Fab 500 general purpose bombs on two fuselage mounted pylons, but standard bomb loading is generally in the enclosed bomb bay. Overall, using wing and fuselage pylons and the internal weapons bay, the backfire has a capacity to carry 24,000 kg or 53,000 pound of weapons. On 15th of April 2022, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry stated Russia used Tu-22M3 bombers to strike targets in Mariupol. The backfire bomber has subsequently been used to strike further Ukrainian targets in the Donbass area. Following the collapse of the Soviet Empire, the Ukrainian Air Force and Navy actually inherited a large number of backfire bombers and even a few of the Tu-22 blinder. They also had more than 400 KH-22 cruise missiles. These were all scrapped under non-Luger Cooperative Threat Reduction Agreement led by the US. This was created for the purpose of securing and dismantling weapons of mass destructions and their associated infrastructure in the former states of the Soviet Union. The bombers were scrapped in 2006, leaving the Ukraine without any heavy bomber capabilities. The Russian Federation is in the process of modernising some of its remaining fleet of approximately 60 backfire bombers to the Tu-22M 3M standard. They will use engines from the Tu-160M2 with 80% of the avionics replaced or upgraded. The aircraft will be adapted to use hypersonic weapons systems. On 16th of August 2018, as seen here, the first modernised aircraft was unveiled during a rollout ceremony at the Kazan Aviation Plant. Service lives are expected to be extended to 40 plus years.